This is Matthew Bauer from the Computer Science Department at Illinois Tech. This is one of a series of lectures about topics that I include in my introductory programming, uh, introductory computer science courses that kind of expose students to more advanced content in computer science. This topic today is, is on game theory. So there is a, a link to a web page if you want to download the materials for this lecture and do some of the coding yourself. So, I don't know if you've seen stories in the past, it's actually been a while now since uh, IBM had their supercomputer Deep Blue defeat the reigning world chess champion. Uh, the later examples were they did uh, in Jeopardy, they had again Deep Blue defeat uh, human players in Jeopardy. But we're going to talk about uh, the world chess champion, so I don't know if you've seen any of those stories from the past. So how, 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 do, how do programs do that? What's the theory behind it? Well, if you think about simple games that two-person games that you play, like tic-tac-toe or checkers or something like that, you are kind of looking ahead a little bit and saying, if, if I do this, and reasoning about, if I do this, what if then maybe they'll do that, and then I'll do this. You're trying to kind of figure out the future moves of the game and what the outcomes might be. Well, computers kind of do the same thing for, uh, for playing like chess or checkers, but they can do it very quickly and they can check and remember a lot more options than you can. So the, the basic theory is called game theory, and uh, there, it's for two-player games, and they're called complete information games. So what that means is there's no hidden information in the game. Like when you're playing cards, you know, you don't know what cards are still in the deck, and, but chess, checkers, tic-tac-toe, these are all complete information games. Everyone knows everything about the current state of the game. And game theory is a way to explore a search space. So a search space is a series of alternating moves, my move, their move, thy, my move, their move. And the, the game theory is going to basically explore all possibilities. So you can imagine this is really large tree of from the current configuration, what are my possible moves? And then for each one of those moves, what are the counter moves? It's this exponentially growing tree. It's pretty large. And exploring this tree and trying to find the best path to choose for this initial, this next move. Now, the game trees don't explore all the way to end games. The end gets, it's too far. It would take, even with speed of computers, it would take too long for something like chess. So they explore a certain number of levels forward, you know, maybe five moves per person, and then they rate that board on how good it is to me winning or bad it is to me losing the game. So we'll talk, that's kind of the key idea, that kind of heuristic understanding of this board is good for me or this board is bad for me. There's some other theory in here, this alpha beta pruning. Uh, there's ways to eliminate certain parts of the tree of this search space that we're exploring and not have to explore the whole thing based on the results I've seen already. So um, we're going to do uh, an example with uh, playing checkers. And uh, so this is, this is actually an assignment in my CS100, an introduction to computer science for CS majors. And the programming necessary is very limited. It's, it's, it's not, not very extensive. I wrote most of the code to, to do this alpha beta pruning, the search space thing. But all the students had to contribute was a small amount of code to somehow score the board. So given a checkers board, a layout of the checkers board, the black checkers and the white checkers, somehow give a score to that, a big a positive number if it's good for you, and it's a negative number if it's bad for you. As you can think about, like, what, what makes a board good or bad? Well, the simple things are just counting checkers. If I have more checkers than my opponent, that's better for me. A little more advanced, maybe the kings, you know, once you get across the board, you become a king. You can move in either direction. Maybe those are worth more than one compared to a checker a non-king checker. So maybe kings are worth three compared to a regular checker. Or maybe a checker that's close to becoming a king is worth more than a checker that's not. Or the sides of the boards where you can't be jumped. Maybe that's, you know, so you can think of these ways to look at a board and determine what's a good, uh, good configuration. So they were given uh, an assignment to, first of all, come up with some design ideas. And they were told, here's the layout of the board, the rows and columns. And you have to come up both for black, play, you're, you're playing black or you're playing white, you're playing black first or white first, you know, all the different uh, options. 
And you can download from the web page. This is a Eclipse project, a little Java project. You can download this if you've ever used Eclipse. You can open up the project. And the basic part that they had to write, here's an example, this is Team A. So Team A is looking at, this is how every single position on that board is represented by a row and a column. I is the row number, J is the column. And it's looking for, at every single position, you know, eight rows and eight columns, it's looking for how many white checkers and black checkers, white kings and black kings. And this one is scoring it so uh, kings get five points, Checker, regular checkers only get three, so it's weighting kings a little more, but not, not twice as good as a regular checker. And uh, the, the, the opponents are negative, so that's what that strategy was. Here's another team. Uh, they're similarly looking at all the positions, and they're actually they're just weighting everyone equally. White checkers, black checkers are minus one. Or white, white checkers and kings are minus one. Blacks are plus one. And then the next one... This one again is rating, uh, counting checkers. Well, this one's doing double for kings. So kings are worth twice as much as regular checkers. And it also adds a little more points here based on, if you're looking, if you're in row one through four, which is close to getting to the other side, you're adding one to the value. And if the opponent is in rows five through eight, you're subtracting one from the value. So they're also rating, you know, adding to the score based on how far apart across the board. And then the last one is, again, just counting checkers, with threes and fives for regular checkers and kings. Th th this is checking how far across, again, items are, but it's somehow weighting them. So you can see that the score it's giving depends what row you're in and how close you are to making a cross. So the other one was just saying, if I'm in the last four rows, it's worth more. If they're in the, my last four rows, it's worth more. This one's somehow weighting it a little bit more. Okay. So these are some different options. Uh, we, you can add more to add, you know, copy one of these and change the code and add more. And if we run this, this is set up to play a tournament of 20 games between every two uh, every two players. So it's going to pair them all up and do all the possibilities. And it's only looking, I think, four levels deep. So it's not looking very far ahead, two, two, two moves per player. And it's basically playing a big round-robin tournament of those four players and trying to figure out who's going to be the best. And so you, you could... You know, take this and you know, make if you have some more time. You know, make the depth a little bigger, play more games. You can see this one came out that uh, Team A had 29 wins total. So it looks like Team A happens to be the best. Team D had 27 wins. So maybe at least for these configuration, those were the best two teams. Now, one other, th one other thing to consider about this is because this is a computer playing against a computer. There's really no reason to play more than one game because they're always going to play the same way unless you add, and here's the little additional thing, you add additional knowledge, additional randomness in on every single move. So it's scoring the board and then whatever the score of the board, it's multiplying by 10 and then adding a random number between 1 and 9 to that to get a small amount of randomness so that the randomness is not going to overwhelm the scoring of the board. But every time you play it, you're going to get a different play because this randomness is, is these two boards were, were the same, but I'm going to randomly pick a different one each time because of this additional randomness. So you can try coding this yourself, download it, and you can always email me at bowerm at iit.edu what you, what you got done, uh, how well do you think it's playing. Let me just give you one hint. The students who actually did the best are the ones that considered a different strategy to score the board depending on how close to the end of the game it was. So if you think about it in checkers, you don't play the same strategy at the beginning of the game as you do at the end, maybe, especially if you're almost losing. If you're almost losing, you could kind of avoid losing by going into certain positions. They could build that into their strategy of scoring the board. So the ones that I showed you are doing the same strategy no matter how many checkers are left. You could adjust your, your logic and your heuristic depending on how many checkers are left and try to get an improved play. So you maybe you, you don't win more often, but you could force it to be a tie game where no one wins. And the way this is set up, if there's 150 total moves uh, without a checker being taken, 
it just calls the game a tie game. So there is a limit, otherwise it might play forever. So have some fun with that. You can always email me if you have questions about this or any of the other uh, uh, example assignments I'm talking about. Again, my email is bauerm at iit.edu.